I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Sound Chips by Queasy Games. These are the creators of um, Everyday Shooter is probably their most famous other game. Um, it's a platformer rhythm game, and uh, the music in each world, like each world, is basically an album with music and graphics by different people. Um, like the second world has graphics by Super Brothers, who did uh, Sword and Sorcery. Um, they've got Deadmau5, um, they have Beck, who made a whole album, which is really cool. I love that they have, you know, different artists do every world, um, keeps it pretty fresh, and it's, um, like, the music, it's not, like, just rigor, like, it's not, you know, um, rock band, or, um, Guitar Hero style stuff, where you're just playing, you know, a normal pre-made song. Um, what you are is this little blob, and you collect notes. And as you collect notes, the music starts to play a little bit more. And so, as you collect more and more, the song gets more and more complete. And the game plays pretty simple. You're a little blob. It's not like Gish, but it plays much tighter than Gish. So, you're a little blob, and you can stick to stuff. Your default state is sticky, and when you hold square, you're not sticky, and you move a little faster. Did I miss an out? No, I didn't. Um, but you don't stick, of course. And lots of different things, if you touch them, have different sound and or audio cues that they give off. And so... The way the game describes levels is experiences, like, or completing levels. It doesn't say, like, you beat level one or anything. It says you experience level one, and I really like that. Because it's a really good way of describing, you know, what you're doing here. It's not quite just playing. Not in the standard way of people consider playing a song or playing a video game. It's something a little weird, but really cool. And we're basically the middle of a... Vinyl record is what our main character is. So... Hello. There we go. Oh, by the way, this game is on PS3, PS4, and PS Vita. Um, it's one purchase of $15 for all three sets, and it has, um, it has Cloud Sync. And the Cloud Sync works really well. Um, for some reason there are different trophies on each platform, but if you Cloud Sync, you get the trophies from the other platforms. Um, the cloud sync is not automatic, you gotta manually do it on, you know, whatever platform you lay displayed on. Um, I find that a bit annoying, but it's not a huge deal. But it's really nice that it's cross-by, that was part of the reason I got it. Um, and the Vita version has touchscreen features, as you might expect, um, that are especially useful for building, um, you can make your own levels too, which is another draw of the game. I don't, I'm, that's not really my thing, but the tools are really cool. And you can play community levels. I'll take a look at a community level at the end, probably. This is one of my favorite worlds, um, in part because of the Super Brothers art, um, and the music's good too, not just the art. But uh, it sort of tells a story as you go through it, and I, I'm, you know, doesn't matter how simple the story is. I'm a real sucker for the story without words sort of thing. So I really like this one. Oh, and uh, back to the gameplay mechanics. So you stick on stuff. And you press square to ro roll on stuff, and you can't stick on things that are black, or, you know, something dark color. Um, you can stick to lighter stuff. And, um, I compared it to Gish earlier, it works a lot better than Gish, because in Gish you have three states. You have sticky, you have heavy, and you have slick. And there's basically four states, because there's also a normal state, which, uh, this game makes a lot easier to control because you're normally sticky, and you you know, switch into, um, sli slick. So, it makes it a lot simpler, because, you know, there's only one state to switch between, two states to switch between, you know, one button. Um, oops, we didn't hit that guy. And I love Gish, but a lot of people have trouble with it, and I can really understand why, but this game really avoids the problem Gish had, and it's just generally a bit more responsive than Gish. Gish was a bit iffy, but I mean, it was a very early physics-based game for, you know, 
pretty advanced physics. There's some physics-based games earlier, but they're like extremely basic stuff. Oh, and another thing, I absolutely love the animation in this game, particularly in this area, but just in general. It's all deliciously smooth, high-res, 2D action going on. I absolutely love that. And watch his little eye as you roll around. The world needs more of this 2D, you know, high-def, high-quality 2D stuff. Like, it's... Uh, I love 2D a lot, and it makes me kind of annoyed that... AAA is all about them 3D graphics. Because, I mean, this looks phenomenal. And 2D isn't worse than 3D. People that think that are just... Oh, it's different. It's not better or worse. And it does, you know, you use it in different situations. And each world basically has its own game mechanics, as you see here. There's mechanics we didn't see in the first world, but the first world's pretty basic. So in this world, you go through different elevators and stuff. And each area is a different song. Like, even within an album, you know... Let's check this out. I'm not sure why this screen takes quite so long to load. I'm playing the PS4 version, by the way. Um, I haven't looked at the PS3 version. I assume it's fairly similar. The PS Vita version is, you know, the same, except the UI is revamped for touch controls. And, uh, you know, half the resolution, of course. Um, yeah, these are all different songs. I said this one sort of tells a story, which is cool. Oops. I always get a little confused by the way the menu works here. Take a look at this album. And this world's really pretty, too. All, all of the worlds are pretty. I like all of them. But, uh... I like how they're all so different, too. Like, there's really good variety in this game. In terms of music, in terms of visuals, in terms of gameplay, it really... It's really pretty cool. And if this game seems too easy to you, there's actually something called Death Mode, which makes the game extremely difficult. Like, there's there's special challenges, it's not like the same levels, but it's like, sort of Meat Boy hard. And, uh, it's... Though, unfortunately, it's not Instant Respawn like Meat Boy. Um, instant respawn is really important if you're making a difficult game, by the way. Um, Super Meat Boy would be incredibly annoying, awful game if the respawn took like a few seconds, even. So... I don't want to harp on this game in particular too much, but I mean... You're gonna make a super hard game, really need to make respawn as uh, painless as possible. It's not a problem in the main game, so I mean... It's not as important as it would be in Meat Boy. But I'll show you what I mean when I try one of the death mode challenges, what they're called. And I love how the the environment goes along with the music. Like, all of the uh, death traps and stuff, they're animated to the music. Well, they're animated and they function like how that fires to the music. Anything red will kill you. Crap. Alright. And I love the visual aspect of the music here. Like, the things going across the screen there. I don't know how to describe them, but... It's really cool. Let's break that. Grab you. Oh, and you can pause at any time and check out how many music notes you've got. Oh, and there's high scores and crap if you want to see those. Let's me incredibly far down the list. Oh well. By the way, I do believe this game is PlayStation exclusive. Um, pretty sure it's only on PS, like it's on all of the current PlayStations, but uh, I don't think it's on Steam or anything. If you have a PlayStation platform, I strongly recommend picking it up. These levels are pretty short, by the way, the ones I'm showing off, just because I didn't want the video to be super long. Um, the later ones are usually maybe twice as long, I'll estimate. They're pretty decently long. And... The levels change up the graphics, even within an album, quite a bit, and it's really cool. I see, I keep wanting to press, uh, circle, but you press triangle to get back to that, it's not a big deal. But always trips me up. 
This is the Dead Mouth 5 album. Um, and who made the graphics in this one? Yeah, Pixel Jam. They're, they look really cool. They're all based off of, well, they're all like named after, um, you know, old arcade titles. And I like that it's like this sort of rounded, pixely look to it. I think it works pretty well. It makes it a little more interesting than just, you know, oh look, pixels. Ah. I don't have a problem with pixels or anything, but it fits the art style a bit better. That the They're pixelated, but you know, they have rounded edges. It's like, you'll see what I mean. With these guys, these guys. They're just round enough to fit with the art style, and just blocky enough to clearly be, you know, pixel art. Which is cool by me. The gameplay stays pretty fresh as you progress through the different worlds. And they add more stuff even within an album. It's not like one album is all entirely the same gimmicks either. So like, this game does, it does like everything so well um, to gush a bit. Like the, the platforming is done really well. Like the my main problem with platformers is, woo. Um, like, basically, Super Mario 3D World made me realize this. Platformers kind of need gimmicks. Because if you have really solid platforming, but everything's kind of the same as you go through it, it's sort of a problem, because you just get bored of it, and you need different worlds, and you need different gameplay gimmicks, too. And that's something this game, and Super Mario 3D World, just as another example, does really well. Like, every level feels different. It's not like, okay, I'm on grass level 1, now I'm on grass level 2, slightly different edition. And as much as I love them, that's a problem that plenty of um, retro games have, is that, you know, grass level 1, grass level 2, quite literally in many cases. Ow. Speaking of new gimmick, oh yeah, and this thing you shoot straight off, which always messes with my brain. I want to go off at an arc, but you don't. I just have to kind of wish that Gish had these controls. I still loved Gish, and... Like, if maybe Gish had, like... If it just removed one state and, like, the default was slick or something, I think it would have been a lot easier for people to control and, you know, get. Like, cause Gish isn't a bad game, in my opinion, it just, it doesn't click with people a lot. And so the problem isn't just, you know, completely change the game, it's just... Change how you interact with the character a bit. Cause this works really freaking well. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the um, the light bar on PS4 actually pulses to the music in this, and there's different um, colors for each, um, is it per album? Or... I'm not sure what chooses the colors, but it's really cool. This is, um, what's it called? Cities by Beck. And I actually really enjoyed this album. Generally, I'm kind of iffy on celebrities working with video games. Um, it helps that I like Beck, but in my opinion, this is an example of somebody actually having something significant to contribute to the game. Like, I mean, I know Rock Band and stuff wouldn't be the same if there weren't, you know, real tracks and stuff from real artists to play, but uh, generally when I see a celebrity's name on a game, I'm like, huh. I mean... I don't think, in general, they tend to do better voice work than, you know, voice actors that, you know, do that for a living all the time. Um, but in this case, you know, as I said, it's Beck, so in my opinion, you would expect it to be good. But uh, this is something really cool, um, and it's not just, like, barfed out music that, you know, it's not an already existing track they refitted into a world or something for the game. But it's this new thing that seems like it really was designed to be in this game, and it works really well. Oh, so all three of Beck's levels are very different from each other. Um, 
Like, this one is city, a bunch of cities and stuff. Um, another one is, like, pretty psychedelic, and the other one's, like, a... Hot, like a... Creepy attic kind of thing. They all have very different aesthetics, like even more so than the other uh, albums do. It also has lyrics, as you might not have heard as I was talking. Also, I absolutely love how the uh, the words appear. I think it's a really cool touch. Yes, hello, Parker. So I'm pretty sure as you go through these levels, you unlock parts to use in the creator, the level creator. I've of course already finished everything, but uh, boop. Come back. There we go. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, I really, what I really love about this is that it's not just gameplay added to music. Okay. Um, it really feels like something that would not exist if not, if it weren't, you know, this game in particular. Like, ah. There we go. Okay. It really feels like something unique. Like, and it, it's a... I really like the word experience that they use. Like, I think that's useful because lots of people get hung up on games should have gameplay and stuff. And, you know, it's only about gameplay. But really... Video games is kind of like, I don't want to get rid of the term, but it's almost a misnomer in some ways. So like, in this game you're not just playing it, you know, the music is an extremely integral part of it. And it's not necessarily the case that every game that's going to be the case, and that's okay. Not every game is going to be entirely gameplay based, not every game is going to be entirely music based. And that's kind of why I like experiences, it's like a deliberately vague term that I think applies to pretty much all games, whereas playing them doesn't necessarily sound right in some cases. Like, Gone Home, you experienced Gone Home. I experienced this. I experienced Halo 1. Um, but play doesn't work in all of those. Play works in this one, but not necessarily all of them. And I think experienced fit, fits this one better than play. Like, because it's not just the act of wandering through the levels. You're hearing the music too, and you're making the music as you go through. The music that you're hearing me talk over through the entire game. So, I promise it's probably a little better to experience when you're, you know, not me talking. That's why I'm not playing the whole game. Well, that's not really why, but, you know, go buy the game and enjoy it for yourself. I love all the personality and all of the, the animations. Like the little chugging, um... What the hell are these called? I guess, is that a crane? I don't know how you would describe this particular device. I know there was one of them in Half-Life 2, that's what I know. Excuse me. There's different segments of the song as you go through. It's always pretty noticeable as you don't have any new notes in the new part of the song. Damn it. Whee! Oops. Meant to do that. We escaped! I love the bombs here. Oh no. Everything just has so much personality in the game. I just love it. The visuals and the music and the mix between the two and the gameplay, just everything integrates. Alright. Also, there's cars. Um, let's just take a look at the cars. This is like... This was a DLC. Um, yeah, this is like a new thing for... It's basically designed for level creators. But you can make vehicles and, you know... Whee! There's actually a couple, well, there's at least one, at least, um, vehicle you make in the main game. 
Oh, and I like how the color changes. Oh. Scar is dangerous. Also, I like how the, the checkpoints when you have a car um, spawn you a new car. Not very good with the vehicles, but yeah. There's lots of different DLCs, and for the most part, the DLCs are, you know, parts for new levels for you to make. I'm not sure if you need the DLCs to play levels, like, made with them. But yeah, here's the community, uh, or actually first. Let's just take a look at the death lo mode levels. So yeah, death mode you unlock after you beat the game. And so, like, this is the super basic, fairly easy one. So yeah, there's constant death everywhere, and you gotta get your notes, and the notes are in random places, so practice definitely helps, but it's not a memory game, it's a skill game. This one's pretty easy, they get pretty hard, I have not gotten very many of these, and almost all of the trophies in this game are actually for death mode and beat school. I'll show you beat school later. Um, are you kidding? Oh well, I don't have to finish it. Yeah, that's... I meant to show you that. Um, let me show you one of the harder ones. I, I always press freaking like circle. Red things are dangerous! Good to know. You have to press X every time you restart, which isn't entirely terrible. But one problem I have is because I say, oh, I'm definitely not going to make it, so I'm just going to pause. Or, no, I'm going to pause. Why is that so slow? See, i got to pause, and then go all the way to retry, and press X again. Um, it doesn't seem like that many steps or that much time to go through, but I've done it literally like a dozen times on one level, more than once, trying to beat these, so it gets really annoying really quick. Um... Not quite an... well, maybe it has scared me off, because I haven't really done too many of these. Partly because of difficulty, and partly just because that makes the experience even more frustrating. But uh, each one of these will net you a silver trophy if you're a trophy hunter, so have fun with all of that. Um, there's a tutorial we didn't even look at. You can also look at your... Um... Oh, right! Um, these are the community albums. I was gonna look at the DLC. This is how we get the DLC. The music shop. So you can buy different sound packs. The curved terrain pack was free. Um, so basically you just buy these to help make your uh, created levels. So let's look at the community. Um, so basically these different albums curated by people like Queasy Games has a few. Uh, the Verge I guess made one. Um, let's look at Shuhei Yoshida. He made one. Like, these are, these are level packs curated by them, like, not necessarily made by, you know, Shuhei. I uh, didn't make any of these, probably. But stuff that he liked. So let's take a look at a level that plays itself. This is, any time you give somebody a level editor, they're gonna make a level that plays itself. This is just an inevitability. Don't press any buttons. Alright. And as you can see, you can mix and match um, assets from different areas, which makes it a little, um, how do I describe that? Graphically a little discordant, mixed, I don't know. Clashy, depending on how you do it. Some of them mix together fairly well, some of them don't. But you know, you have the freedom to make how you want to decide it. You can also pick how the music plays. You know, you make the level and the music when you're, you know, making stuff. Let's catch the kitty! Coins higher to the top of the screen play a higher note. I guess I'll give you a look at the track creator. I'm not good at making stuff in it. I don't tend to create levels and stuff. Chase the kitty! Kitty! Get in my belly! Did you see a kitty around here, sir? I love the just random crap happening outside there. That's a nice touch. Kitty! From here. 
I'm here, kitty. Exploded! Kitty. Try not to explode. Hey. Hey. What? What did I tell you about exploding, kitty? Whatever. We don't actually need to follow the kitty. We can just go. Oh, we go outside. I've only played the curated ones, but the levels made seem to be pretty decent. I'm sure there's lots of penises and stuff made in some of the community levels that then get deleted and stuff, but uh, the curated ones look pretty good. And I'm sure there's lots of uncurated goodness out there too. This must be DLC content, the city, I think this is like the city art DLC or something, so. Maybe you only pay to use it, not to, you know, play it. That makes sense. All the DLC is super cheap, by the way, it's just a buck. Um, I don't really begrudge them for the DLC. I know some people whine about it, but. Oh, I like the typewriter of doom, I'm not sure I can finish it. Oh crap, I still need to show you two more things, so. We're not going to finish this one, because I think it's fairly long. It's kind of difficult, but I like the, the typography thing going on here. I'm a bit of a design nerd, though, so that's to be expected. Yeah, this one's fairly difficult, actually. Kind of surprising, since considering you're just wandering around some type. But you can make you can make levels fairly difficult or fairly easy depending on you know what you want to do. Whatever, let's just go on. I guess I don't have to get all the notes. No, not getting the notes actually is kind of lame because then you don't hear the whole song. So I actually kind of don't want to just go on. But just to give you a quick overlook, the visuals are mostly what make this one, but it looks pretty cool. Look. Also, the physics difference makes um, this a bit more forgiving. The sticky form, even if you can't stick completely to this, you get a little, you get, well, a fair amount of freedom, which Gish generally didn't have in terms of, well, Gish was just iffy in terms of staying on ledges and stuff. Without stickiness, of course. All right, so let's look at Beat School, if I can remember how to get to it. This is one problem. I actually completely forget how to get to beat school. Is it part of the... Oh, right. It's in it's in the level editor. All right, so this is the level editor. Beat school is this different mode where um, you basically make the song that is playing. So it gives you this beat. starts on that. Oh, I accidentally got one right. No. Delete. Ah. The editor, I'm not entirely a big fan of how certain stuff is. Um, because like, I just want to play this, but like there's two different modes, like there's placing and then moving, and it's really easy to accidentally play stuff. So the editor could be a bit better in my opinion, but it, it kind of works. I prefer it on the Vita. It's easier to make levels on the Vita, I have to say. Um, I'm just embarrassing myself here. I don't actually have a good ear for music. Um, so is that everything? There was something else. Well, I think I was just showing you the level editor. I'm awful at making levels, so I can't really show you this very well, but you can, you know, you can add beats and be like, yeah, that's horrible. Um, you can add the sounds and you can add terrain be like, let's make some boxes. Then you play it. Let's play my awful music.
I never learned these tools well enough to use them properly. But, as you've seen, you can do some really cool stuff with this. Um, but I'm not going to do that live, because it, you know, requires actually learning things, and I don't learn things. I just play them. Well, this is, um, let's go back to the main menu. How do I, how do I go back to the main menu? Oh, duh. Probably the big red X and quit button. Yeah, this has been Sound Shapes by Queasy Games. It's 15 bucks on PS3, PS4, PS Vita. The one purchase for all of those. I love cross save. It's cross save and cross buy, which I just love. Um, I would highly recommend checking it out if you have one of those consoles.